Good evening, everybody. Thank you for uh, joining in. I can't even do it now. It's weird. I caught it at the last minute. Thank you guys for joining in. Let me go ahead and open this up. Go ahead and make this public. Thank you, guys. Um, let's go ahead and get logged in. Appreciate your patience. Thank you for joining in, everybody. YouTube and Facebook Live. As you get this, if you are on Facebook, please share this. Let's go ahead and share this conversation. I'm here with uh, my good brother, friend, uh, musical mentor. I watched him grow up. <laughs> he was he was the dude on the organ, killing, grinning, directing the choir and band. Rawls, what's up, dude? Shout out to Hilton Rawls. Thanks for logging in tonight. Man, so much to discuss from this musical mind. And um he's not just he's not just a songwriter, guys. He is just an awesome person. Uh, and we thank him for being on with us tonight. So thank you for being on with us tonight. And so, uh, we want to go ahead and get this conversation started, man, because man, I probably sent them about a hundred questions tonight and I want to. <laughs> at least get through at least five of them. I want to be able to get through at least five of them tonight because I think uh, his experience and um, what he lends is so important to, uh, you know, just the music that we listen to, the music that we sing, but then also just, you know, quality of life. Um, again, as I mentioned, he is not just a, your average musician. He is not your average songwriter. Uh, but he's an amazing brother and person tonight. And so I want to introduce to some and um, present to others, uh, David Frazier. Dave, say what's up to everybody, bro. Uh, good evening. Good evening um, to everyone. Glad to be with you, bro. Cool, cool, cool. Man, let's um, man, let's jump right into it, man. New York native, bro. <laughs> Brooklyn all day. Brooklyn <laughs> all day. When I met Dave... Yes. Um, Dave was playing the organ. I was very, very young. And as I said, I, pro I probably knew him before he knew me. And um, But it was just a blessing to watch him um, teaching songs to our national choir um, for Bible Way. I mean, every summer big, it was big, a Big new shout song. out to Bible Way. Big shout out to Bible Way. Big shout out to Bible Way. That's, that's our home, guys. Bible Way is our home. And um, man, just again, every summer. Um, coming to convocation, but then also when Bishop Rogers would come to Patterson and visit uh, Bible Way in Patterson, you know, they would slide through, man, and the choir would be rocking, bro. And it was just, it was just amazing um, to see him there and then to see the progression, to see the progression. Um, Dave, how long have you been writing? Oh, <clears throat> I want to say, um, I think I wrote my first song and I, I showed it to Bishop Michael Rogers, maybe about, mm, maybe maybe 40 years ago, maybe. Wow, wow, that's good. And then um, how long before you got your first placement? What was your first placement with a, with an artist? My, my, my first placement actually came with uh, Bible Way. Um, uh, one of the National Choir albums, I wrote a song that I showed Bishop Mike maybe a year or two before the album actually happened. Yeah. And and when I first showed him the song, a song called All Things Work Together for the Good. And I uh, showed him the song and uh, he was like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> you know, I'm not sure. You know, go back and work on it some more. Good, right, right. So about about a year had passed, and he mentioned to me that he was getting ready to record the National Choir. Did I did I have any songs? And I and I told him, yeah, I got the song. I I, I, I could show it to you after the service. He said, all right, I'm a, I'll be right back. I'm came back in. I showed him the same song. And he was like, oh, man, that's incredible. Let's record that. Right, so right, right. That was the uh, beginning of re recording. Um, All Things Work Together for the Good. Uh, Keith Dobbins, I think, led the song okay. on that National Choir album. And uh, I, I was still playing from a musician standpoint, um, but I, I hadn't really placed any music from a, from a songwriter perspective. So, Right, right. No, that's cool, man. Yeah. Yeah, man. I um, man. I just uh, probably one of my most memorable com conventions, man. Probably had to be BC of man somewhere. I might get my years wrong. Somewhere between eighty nine, ninety. I think uh, Bishop Hez was there, and you were playing behind Hez, and um, Kevin Stancil was on the drum, and um, man, it was it was that was that was a really memorable one because that that particular one was probably the first time I had uh, sung in a choir and you know behind uh, uh, an artist so I, and I definitely remember um, your presence that particular uh, convention man and so um in your songwriting process bro do you write from personal experiences um how do you create what you write? Well, um, I always like to, uh, I, I guess I'm a little bit different from, from, I guess, most writers that are experiential um, writers. Uh, I'm not, I'm not really a, an experimental, experimental, well, experiential right. writer. Um, I, I, I've always kind of try to, and I live by this mantra, even from a writing perspective, even now today, I always try to find things that haven't been sung about, haven't been talked about, haven't been mentioned melodically through song from a subject right. matter perspective. And so, I mean, when I just, for instance, when I did All Things Work Together for the Good, I hadn't heard a song that was all things work together for the good at that time. Yeah. And, uh, and, uh, I've always tried to st stick with that. Even with the early love fellowship music, um, second chance, how much we can bear power belongs to God. We made it. Yeah. Um, I need to survive. Uh, um, I did a song with Karen Clark. She had Holy Dower Holy. Again, yeah. I was always even favor. I was always aiming to find subject matter that wasn't being exploited in church and then give, give, give make it musical and uh, uh, make it relevant. Yeah. Uh, so that's what I pretty much try to stick with. Even now, if I'm writing a song, I'm fundamentally writing because I want to say something that hasn't been said or make makes make an uh, obscure thought musical so that's my that's my my yeah dave also too man this is this this wasn't on our list of questions but you know thinking back bro you kind of tap like with our background pentecostal apostolic background bro you also tap kind of into the worship element before it became popular um amongst our culture man talk about that experience like introducing that element into a lot of our churches when it wasn't necessarily popular in our churches I, I i it was my my experiences uh um when i did the first psalms hymns and spiritual songs stuff the shekinah uh, uh, uh records those those songs were birthed in a small uh church setting i wasn't at bible way at that time in a much smaller church and just spending a lot of time um, um, in a in an atmosphere that I I was inspired by the atmosphere 
and just kept finding things. I would hear things when people got up to pray, when people got up to sing, when people got up to preach, that was just like amazing to me and that I, I was was blessed to in turn make it musical. So yeah. Yeah, that was that was amazing, man. Cause I remember those the the volumes. You were doing them in yeah. volumes, man. And um, you know, it was so so many beautiful, uh beautifully written songs. And again, because you know that wasn't uh the actual culture of the bump of the machandas and things of that nature. Um, but yet, you know, again, you still, you know, found the lane. Um, you just mentioned, I didn't tell every, I didn't kind of go down your resume a little bit because uh, I just wanted people to just know the man behind uh, the pen in so many songs, right? And so you mentioned it a little earlier. You mentioned, you know, one of my favorite, How Much We Can Bear. You know, that's, that, that's one of my favorites, probably the Shaking the House version um, is one of my, one of my favorite versions. Um, but you also, um, I need you to survive. That's, that was a different record, Dave. I need, when, yeah, let's, let's talk about that because that one, that one, I need you to survive. It's, it's a different message. Um, it's one that encourages people. Uh, it gets picked up on the Oprah show and then it becomes nominated for him and actually makes it into the hymn book. Yeah, I I, I uh, often talk about the story of I, I need need you to survive. Um, it's a very interesting story because when I initially wrote the song, I had wrote the song in the same kind of atmosphere that I was doing the Psalms, hymns, records, and I I, I think I had did. Um, I'd already did the first one out and I was finishing the second one. And uh, one Sunday I was in church and the pastor was preaching uh, from uh, 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter. Uh, you know, just talk about how we're all members of the body of Christ and how every joint has has importance, has value. And he said, reach over and touch your neighbor and say, I need you. Mm. You need me. Touch somebody behind you. Say, I, I need you. You need me. And just listen to the message. And I was just like, you know, wow, I need you. You need me. That's some, just that's like something I've never really heard in church. Like people sing it. So I wrote the whole song in the service before, you know, it was over. And I asked the pastor if I could sing the song. I wrote this song while you were preaching and I and I wanted to share. He said, well, why don't, why don't you just share it at the end of the service? And I shared the song. And so after I shared it, he dismissed. He said to me, oh, you know, let's close our services with that song every week. It was just amazing. Fast forward, maybe two or three months, uh, I, I get a call from um, um, Bishop Bishop Head's office just saying, hey, Bishop is getting ready to record another family affair record. He wants you to come to the church, show him some songs. So I, I, I'll never forget, it was a Saturday morning, I think. He had some singers in the room. And I, I said, well, uh, I got a couple of songs. So I, I'll do this one first. I did a song called We Made It. Yeah. And uh, oh, he was like, oh, man, that's going to be great. Oh, I just love that yeah. song. That's going to be dope. And uh, I said, uh, then I showed him another song. Um, and... Uh, uh, he was like, "Oh, I like that song too." That you know, we uh, you know, did we record? He asked me, asked his people, "Did they re y'all record that?" I was dope, and I said, "Well, Bishop, I got this other song that we do. I do at the church, you know, when we get ready to close, and uh, I just think it'd be a great song for you to do. It's something, to something totally different. So I played. I need, I need you to survive." And he literally just stared at me for a minute, and he just went like, "So, so, what you want me to do with that?" I said, I said, I said, um, I mean, how, how do you feel about the song? It's like, he said, I don't have no feelings about the song. I said, it doesn't have any parts. Uh, it's mostly unison. It's, we never sung, we've never recorded a song like that before. I don't even know. I don't, I don't, I don't know how this is going to work. And I said, I said, okay, I, I understand. Um, I said, well, well. Uh, you give me a date to come uh, teach uh, Love Fellowship. We made it. 
and the other song I had to, I did, and uh, you know, would be cool. So what what happened was I got a date to come. I thought we made. I thought the other song I did, and then I did. I needed to survive too, because he hadn't. He wasn't there that night at no. rehearsal. So I did. <laughs> I did. I needed to survive, and I mean, it really went over really really well with the choir, just like in rehearsals and stuff like that. But um, uh, the rehearsal was great. So then maybe like about. Two or three weeks later, Bishop Hez had a service at the church where he was inviting some of the uh, record company people to come hear some of the future music that he was going to record for the Family Affair uh, uh, too. And uh, I never forget he had, uh, I believe, Karen Clark Sheard was there, was there that night as well too, because she came, uh, she was promoting her new project as well too. So anyway. Uh, Karen I sang and, and uh, he had did a couple other songs. Then he said, come on, Dave, come to the organ. Let's do We Made It. Bam, did We Made It. Uh, it, was, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was crazy. And uh, um, and after I did We Made It, I got up from the organ and went and sat down because I figured Dave was going to do some other songs. So he said, where'd David go? Hey, come back, Dave. Do Let's do that Survive song. Let's do that. Let's do the song. <laughs> that's the vibe song. Yeah, that's what he said. He said, "Come on, let's do the survive song," and start playing it. You know, the band was still kind of, kind of feeling me out a little bit on it, but I was like yelling out different things, you know. And I like played it one time through, and then choir starts singing it. And man, I want to tell you, they must have sang that song for about maybe. An hour and 15 minutes, an hour and 20 minutes or so. Uh, the church was just destroyed. Like, like people were crying, hugging each other, uh, going across the room, apologizing and all kinds of stuff. People were just going. It was it was nuts. Yeah. And Bishop has looked over at me and went like this. And I said. Right. <laughs> and I did the same thing. And uh, again, from that point, uh, we recorded the song at Radio City. And, it, and the recording was scheduled for the end of September. But the same year, September 11th happened, which threw everything into, into something crazy. So um, the recording was pushed back to like the end of October, beginning of November, I think it was. Right. And uh, and then when we did the song, that's why you hear and we made it. Tell Bin Laden, we made it. Tell Afghanistan, Afghanistan because everybody yeah. was everybody was uh, blaming. You know, everybody was saying. You know, of course, right. they were the cause of the of the incident. So then, I need to survive. Happens in the concert, and then the screen comes down in Radio City, and all these images of nine eleven and. World Trade, and he had, he had invited families of people that lost loved ones in the World Trade and stuff, and it was just like, oh, it was just amazing. It wow. was an amazing, amazing experience. So from that point all the way, you know, fast forward now, a uh, little over uh, 20 yeah. years almost, Yeah, uh, the song has, uh, you know, really transcended what 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 people I guess what people consider basic gospel music because it has become um, something that that uh, people have used it during Hurricane Katrina. Of course, you mentioned Oprah Winfrey show. Um, it's been sung at the Democratic National Convention, Republican National Convention. Uh, I've done licenses for for I Need to Survive for the Boston Pops, London Symphony Orchestra. It's it, wow. it's it's uh, translated into maybe 12 or 13 languages. It's been in a couple movies. It's, it's, um, I mean, it's still, and, and of course, recently being added to, uh, uh, the new one Lord, one faith, one baptism hymn book is actually offered by, um, a, a GIA publications and GIA is the publications that have been making hymn books and, and, and sacred music books for years. They now offer, I need you to survive as a individual piece of music called black gospel collections. And, wow. uh, you know, uh, it's just, a it, it's kind of hard when I, when I was blessed to go overseas a few years ago, 
2017, I went to Sweden and Germany. And uh, I mean, it's amazing mm -hmm. how people that necessarily don't speak English well can sing, I need you to survive. <laughs> Just, you know, I had, I had 1300 singers in, 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 in uh, Stockholm, Sweden. I got on a train and went to another city called Yavla, another thousand eight hundred to a thousand singers there. I took a plane and flew to Gothenburg, Sweden. They have a place over there called the School of Gospel. Wow. And so so on a day's notice, uh, another fifteen hundred people met me in a church just to sing David Fraser songs for a couple of hours and stuff like that. And then then went on to Germany to Cologne and to uh, uh, to uh, uh, Munich and to uh, uh, another crazy city called Beidkreuzner in in Germany. Where speak I that mean, language? Uh, Beidkreuzner means city of bridges in German, mm. and these people packed out a community center just to sing I Need You to Survive and, and some of the other uh, songs, Do You Know Jesus and How Much We Can Bear and just incredible, incredible time overseas. So so I don't really know, you know, I, did, I didn't know it was gonna be uh, like this, but I did, I did know that the song was special and I did know that when people sang it, um, they, it, it, was, it was a way for people to come Something together. Happened. Yeah, 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 and and even now, you know, I think people use it almost clicheish now, but uh, but it's still, you know, people still call me and and email me and just talk about, you know, how just we just started spontaneously singing. I need to survive, and it's just, you know, it's still, it's still, yeah, this was time. So it's a, so it's a great blessing. That that's what's up, man, and um, you know, that speaks to you know songwriters that. You know, sometimes you present something to an artist that they may not be in that season or they may not see the full vision of it at that moment. But mm -hmm. that doesn't mean you should hide it or put it back on the shelf. Right. Like it's 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 a, it's about timing because you really just explained two stories where you presented songs and it was like, ah, but then all of a sudden it still made the cut, the, the final cut yeah. of the, song, the album. And, 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 and you never know. Um, that's why I, I try to tell creatives to continue to create because if you continue to create you'll 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 find yourself coming upon something that at the end of the day uh people will be able to use so uh yeah i mean I, I, you know even now when i write a song now i i, I often tell songwriters to use the platforms and use the avenues that you have available to you to bounce the ideas around, you know, being a, a worship director at a church. I mean, I may come in one week and say, Hey, everybody, I'm going to teach y'all a song. Just want to see right. how it sounds. Just want to see how it flow. And if, it, if it doesn't flow right, or sometimes I may adjust it even while I'm teaching it, that having that area and that space, to throw ideas out and to see how they flow and make little adjustments and make it go. That is just something great. So, so, um, yeah. you know, I'm, even, I've always taught like that. Yeah. And even when you're mentioning, I need you to survive coming off of the pastor sermon or, um, uh, encouragement or exhortation that he was given, like musicians, songwriters being tapped into the place where they're feeding your spirit, you know, I, th I thought that was very, you know, encouraging and even um, enlightening at that moment because some don't see that as, you know, a place of inspiration. Like, ooh. yeah, yeah, it's a, it's amazing. I, I mean, I can go through some of the songs that I've written over the over over time, but I, I for for instance, I saw across the screen somebody asked about "Power Belongs to God." Yes, sir. "Power, Power Belongs to God" was uh, introduced to the concept. I peeked my head into the Renaissance Center uh, about 20 years ago, and the guest minister was Bishop T.D. Jakes. Huh. And he read Psalm 62 and 11, and he preached. Uh, 
uh, just touch somebody and tell them power belongs to God. <laughs> and I had never saw that particular text or heard the text of scripture. God has spoken once and twice have I heard this power belongs to God. So I was just like, man, I got to go home and read this after, you know, after this preaching. And I went home and read it and I saw I saw the, those words. Trust in the Lord at all times. Pour out your heart before him. Power yes. belongs to God. God has spoken once and twice have I heard it. Power. And then just kind of making it musical. Who can search his understanding, his thoughts higher than ours, all powers in his hand. And then you got to add things to get to keep it flowing, you know, musically. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, um, they're, they're, I, I never forget listening to one of the uh, uh, associate pastors at that time and at the small church praying. And she was just praying, God, show us your wonder. Help us to see your wonder. And I ended up writing, look and see the wonder of God. When I look to the heavens and the earth below, I, I see the wonder of God. You know, those kinds of pieces, you know, that stuff is invaluable. I, I, there's a, there's a, a saying on Love Fellowship's wall in Brooklyn Church that says, and because God is the greatest power, we shall, we shall not be defeated. So yeah. I, when I wrote the song, No Defeat. No Defeat. The vamp of that win. song is, and because God is the greatest power, we shall not be defeated. So, again, you know, the, there's no great, there, there is some great inspiration from what I call modern vernacular, because now our music is becoming much more modern, culture driven. But but when you get something that's modern, you have to give it some foundation from scripture. You got to give it some foundation from revelation. And uh, that's why I like that's how I like to write. That's how I like to kind of flow. Man, that's that that's great, bro. Because I mean, I mean, again, your songs expand denominational lines. Um, your song, your songs expand. You know, cultural, ethnic boundaries. Um, you are literally an international impact, and um, I think that's that's encourage that's encouraging for the songwriters now who are, you know, sometimes get distracted by writing hits, you know, um, you're just encouraging everybody to keep creating, finding places of inspiration. Yeah. I, I don't know if there's a such thing as writing a hit song. I, I, I mean, and I'm just going to just tell you, I, 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 I've had conversations with secular writers as well as Christian writers. I don't know if there's a formula for a quote unquote hit song. Now I believe that there are, are some things that you can do uh, to make your song usable, make your song relatable. Um, um, the impact of the song, I think, is how you feel about the song when you, when, when, you know, how it makes you feel at the end of the day. And uh, but as far as like it being successful, I think I think music becomes successful when when you do when you do and you present the best that you that you think you have or that you know you have um um to god yeah and doing your there's a there's a there's something about uh ex excellence and the spirit of excellence you know just presenting what you have in the spirit of excellence and and i mean you know well Will that guarantee you radio play? No, you're gonna have to pay a radio promoter, and you're gonna have to do. You got to play the game, but uh, but uh, but I, I've I've I didn't. You know, someone asked me in an interview recently about the Grammys, and I, I said, uh, "Well, you know, I didn't I didn't know I was writing a Grammy award winning song. I just thought I had a good song. I just thought it was something that <laughs> people could use. I thought the message was strong, and and I it I liked the way it made me feel from from a writer perspective, and so." Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I, I can't give out any, any uh, uh, tools to write hits, but I, I can tell you that if you play by some musical rules, if you, if you make your thoughts, uh, if you make your thoughts uh, singable, sensible, uh, 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 if you, if you write from a pure place, yeah. Um, not from a, a a place of trying to have the elements of a song that you think is great or a song that you think is popular. I mean, I mean the sky's the limit. Yo, that's good stuff, bro. I want I want to divert a little bit from the music part to kind of 
talk about. And I see the I'm questions. Gonna... I see everybody's questions. Uh, we, I'm definitely going to try to answer questions. Some questions have been flashed across the screen. And yeah, we got to. So, I, I definitely so we'll got to. A, a couple of them are about the business, the songwriting business aspect, and uh, someone uh, talked about uh, Lord Rain Over My Life. Totally. <laughs> yeah, that's off of the favorite album, uh, uh, the favorite uh, Psalms, Hymns, and Spiritual Songs number three. Yep. And uh, yeah, again, you know, uh, uh, I've, I've always tried to like make the songs make sense, like with verses, choruses, vamps, bridges. Mm -hmm. And that's this classic um, um, songwriting tools that if you bought any book on songwriting, any book on arranging, I'm looking in my library now just at at just uh uh, little books on songwriting, you know, arranging, uh, song structure. I, I'm I'm a big verse, verse, uh, bridge, chorus, vamp guy. Right. So so right. I, I'm not a big just one line kind of dude. I do. You right. know, I've never really been a one line kind of dude, but and and I'm not I'm not taking anything away from those songs that 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 Dr. Judith Christie McAllister says are seven eleven songs, uh, songs that got seven words that you repeat eleven times. I'm not taking anything away from that. I think they have their place, um, but I just think the better songs and the songs that live with you and the songs that make you want to go back and revisit. Are the songs that have great stories? Yeah, you know, tell a great story. Um, uh, James Hall often kind of kids me that that um, you know he still listens to my very first Psalms hymns record, and they sing the offering song off at, at uh, when he's with uh, Bishop Bond, and and yeah. and uh, and that stuff is twenty years old, and it's like amazing, you know, but. You know, when you when you have great stories, you know, just that offering song says uh, it's so interesting. It says with our offerings and gifts, the windows of heaven, they lift and the blessings keep pouring down. It's so good to be living under an open heaven. It's so good to be walking up the highway of no highway of blessings with our yeah. offerings and gifts. The windows of heaven, they lift and the bless and it just became it, it's something that I did at my church for offering. So, I, I, because we didn't, we were singing everybody else songs. So I just thought we would, we needed an offer song, and then you know, you know, like his presence is here to heal again. You know, that was one of those songs Woo! that was a, that was something for altar hey. call, and uh, you know, so different hey. things, you know. But that's that's what I'm talking about. His presence is here to heal. Again, you write you writing worship songs before it became like a main thing or a mainstream thing to do in the black church. His presence is here to heal is, oh, bro. Again, again, like I said, I really just, and I still focus on this right now today. I I, I think gospel music, uh, one of the things I loved about Andre Crouch was that he had such a, a understanding of church and the needs of church because he was able to give us songs for different portions of the worship experience. And I really took that approach more than just the expressions of how I feel, uh, uh, what I think, um, who David is. And, and our music is really, really self-based, me-based, me uh, individual uh, thoughts, you know, by, by me. Don't yeah. the music the, the music is a part of me, but by me. So yeah. people sell their perspectives, their thoughts, their feelings about what how church should be and stuff like that. And 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 the older music, like the Andre music, like the Walter Hawkins music, like the um uh you know, there's some others, you know, yeah. you know but it wasn't me based. It was God base, his people base, and that's pretty much where I I kind of lay my hat. And I try to always lay my hat there. Yeah. So before before we switch the narrative, because we gotta get to this other passion that of yours that I think is critical um for uh the black church, real quick. Have you written a song called Jesus Paid It All? Samuel Talbert is asking that question. 
Uh, no, um, I haven't. I haven't written a song called "Jesus Paid It All," um, and I probably will not. Um, only because of the fact that um, it's it's what I call a overused subject matter, and I try I try to stay away from subject matter that is overused. Like yeah. I'll never write a song about the grace of God. Amazing grace. So God, God's grace is is wonderful. God's grace is beautiful. God's grace because yeah. subject matter determines the life of your song. Mm. So if your subject matter has been used a lot, it's like I, I wrote a favor song after I did favor uh, thirteen years ago. Now everybody got a favor song. Everybody got something about favor, but but. It, you, have, you have to be, you have to be careful with subject matter, and if you're not careful, you 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 your songs get lumped along into the big category and the big bucket and the big box of all the other songs that the subject matter has been used against. So, yeah, yeah, Fa favorite was a dope song, but Dave, man, um, a few years ago, uh, you you shifted your life in terms of your daily eating regimen, your exercise regimen, just the way you lived um, your life. And it's a message that I think is very um, important for the body of Christ, uh, the music industry at large, you know, because after a lot of our concerts, you know, we're at <laughs> restaurants ordering meals like it's the daytime and we just left the gym and we're trying to refuel you know we got a bunch of pastas and fried foods on our plates uh late at night after late night concerts man but um a couple years ago you 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 changed up some things man and just out of the kindness of your heart uh you were sharing a lot of the information and the content uh concerning those health changes man what what influenced that and then how is that journey um of just being more conscious of what you're eating and eating more natural how's that been for you well, well, I, I, I want to not. I want to first say, here's my disclaimer. Uh, my early life, from 15 to 35, 34 maybe, uh, I, I lived a very healthy, reckless life. Of course, I, 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 I still have my favorite places that I ate at late at night, early in the morning. Just, just random, you know. New Yorkers have have, have a, a a great uh, blessing to have so many cultures, so that food becomes almost like a a, a gathering place, a fellowship place. So yeah, I, I, a lot of my friends, uh, I, I I remember uh, going to church all day. And walking from 170 Adelphi Streets down to Calb Avenue to Juniors, and eating till maybe one in the morning, and then jumping on the train, go home, and just starting to grind again. Yeah, I mean, I remember that. Um, when I got into my early 30s, um, I started to try to understand a little bit more about food and what you put inside your body because you can't put garbage into your body and expect a good result. Um, so kind of changed a little bit a lot you know from uh, uh, eating eating more uh, food that is organic um, eating more food that is uh, that I understood where it came from um, uh, eating less processed foods, less fast foods, and the and those and those things. And when I started going in, going into my forties, I, I I started to see how when I would talk to my friends about health, they would kind of like, eh, you know, you you got to die from something. Which was the big thing people would say, you know. and uh, um, I I remember uh, just having conversations with really really super super talented gifted individuals about health, 
and they would they would, they would they just kind of like, like nah, 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 I'm good, I'm good. I'm good. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep taking this medication. I'm gonna yeah. keep eating this, I'm gonna keep eating this sugar. sugar. I'm gonna keep eating whatever. I'm not gonna exercise. I'm not gonna do the push-up challenge and all that kind of crazy stuff. Dave, I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna let you have it. And uh, now, um, 10, 15 years later, all of the people that I had that conversation with have gone out of here for various amounts of things that I felt like they could have reversed could have turned around, around by just by making just some changes, changes and, and, and just doing some things different. I'm still a big advocate, advocate for, for, for people pushing back from sugar. sugar. Yeah. Um, I, think, I think sugar, sugar is, 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 you know, if you know, I posted, I posted an article, article talking about, talking about how, how sugar is the new crack. crack. Um, um, it, 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 with COVID-19 now, sugar weakens the immune system. Um, um, uh, uh, vegetable, vegetable oil, oil, you know, just try to tell people, people most of the vegetable oils are made from GMOs and, and, and stuff that's not that's real. Not real. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, you know, you know, buying, buying organic. organic. Uh, I'm actually, I'm actually in a, in a, just coming just out of a 40, 40, 40 day, day, no meat, meat no sweets, no, no bread. bread. Yeah, and uh, yeah, uh, started uh, eating uh, uh, a lot more. more. Meatless products. products. Um, of course, of course I, 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 I've always been at least the last 15 years, 10 years, 15 years. 15 years, 15 years I'm a big tea advocate. advocate. Um, I don't drink I don't coffee, 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 but I, I do drink tea. I actually travel, actually travel around and I can collect, collect tea. Because, because I read something, read something on Google, on Google um, about, 15 about 15 years ago that said people that drink tea every day live the longest on the earth. Wow, so I, so I make I sure, make I, have sure I have tea, tea every day. Every some day, type, some of type of tea. You know, I may sweeten it with some food or, or something like that. Or, or, you know, some you know, kind some of, kind of a, um, um, natural sweet or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. yeah. Um, um, I, it, I, it, it bothers, bothers, it bothers, bothers me. me. It hurt, it hurt me to lose a lot of, lot of friends. friends. <laughs> Uh, 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 I mean, I people mean, that I knew that, that were that athletic, were athletic first, first person, but, but later on, they just kind of just decided that they were just going to eat, eat and, and just and let it go. Let it go. So, so, so I'm still, I still, I still try to help, try to help many, many, many people. I pop my shirt, my shirt says, famous enough. Yeah, I'm famous enough. I don't need to be famous. No more famous. But I do want to tell people, listen, listen, you can just, just, uh, 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 make a make decision, decision to try, try some things, things different. different. Do some do things, things different. different. Uh, uh, if you don't want to run, 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 run. You, you, you know, get you, you know, a get bike, you a bike, get you a trip, trip, trip. You know, um, um, put the soda down, down. Put, 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 put a, a, a sugary sugar drink down. down, drink more water, drink more tea, tea, get more rest, get more rest. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm. You know, you it know, just helps, just helps everything, everything that goes on with your body. body. Um, I've, I've, I've had guys, had guys that are much that younger, than younger than me recovering from strokes, strokes recovering from heart attacks, heart attacks recovering from, from, from all kinds of, kind of internal, internal issues. issues. That, that all they had to do was just kind of just, just, just put some things back. back. You know, you know, um, um, you know, you know. Just put just some of the summer pork, pork back, back, some of the some of the back, 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 some of the some of the chicken back. back. You know, maybe you know, more fish, fish, fish go meatless. Uh, put some uh, of the soy, soy back. back. It's, it's not, not really good for African Americans American come now. now. So, so, and they're real mean. You know, you can learn. You learn. You know, you know. They use the same thing. You want to hide the hide from black from black in the book. Yeah, I'm a avid avid a reader about health things. I'm always always reading about natural healing. There's so There's many so things that we can do to, to, to make those, yeah. those, make those, make those change, change so that, so that If we're healthy, healthy we, can, we can really, really do, do the ministry that, 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 that call to all to do. But if we're right. sick all the time, my legs, legs are small, my feet are small, feet small. Feet got, got my, my headaches, headaches, headaches are always going to ask aspirins. I had bills and all this kind of stuff all the time. I'll back, 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 back. And we, we, we don't know, we don't know about doing anymore. Do or exercise. exercise. Can't, 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 I'm, 20, I'm, 20, I'm 50, 55 this year. And I can I still, still drop, drop, give me, give me 30, 30. 30, 30 there we go. And, yeah, and, 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 you know, um, but I'm saying, saying these are the things that, that, uh, 
I mean, when I, I mean, first started, started doing, doing this, it, like, it's like, ah, ah ain't nothing ain't to the vitamin, man. ain't nothing ain't to the health, 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 let me let me try to try to let me turn turn his headphones off from just the computer. Hello. Oh my God! Yeah. Yeah, that's probably the headphones. Oh okay. So now you're just getting the the, the MacBook Pro. Okay, got you. So okay, so yeah, um, so yeah. Wait, it, let me let me turn you up. Let me turn you up here so I can hear what you say. Okay. Okay. Did I lose you? Nope. We're here. Nope. Wait a minute here. Um, let's see. Uh, hold on. Cam and Mike. Audio. Okay. Yeah, that's on. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, that was the way. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I was waiting. Yeah, okay, so we get awesome. Yeah, uh, yeah, they're, they're saying much better now. Okay, so I don't know if the headphones was dying because we were perfect at the beginning. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I caught I caught majority of what you said. Definitely, we um, some guys you knew when uh, you first met them, they were athletic and you know, they just kind of didn't pay attention to the health conversations and kind of. You know, it, it's it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate, man. And I know uh, definitely. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm definitely a tea drinker. So you you encourage me tonight with that one. Um, we're gonna we're gonna keep drinking. Um, shout out, man. I just want to shout out a couple of people that's logging on. Natasha Grant. Um, what's up, Natasha from Philly? Kim Pendleton representing D.C. Maryland area. My brother Logan. Thanks for logging in, bro. Um, man, Vic, my wife Shaquilla. Thanks, babe. Uh, sitting across from me. In the other room, Percy Robinson, Tim Grimsley. Man, just shout out to everybody that's joining in. Uh, my Atlantic City brothers, Jared and John Howard. Um, yo, man, some of my young crew up here, man, from North Jersey, man. Shout out to Justin and Donovan and, and Nick. Um, and, man, just to everybody that's chiming in tonight, I am on with um, my good brother, Dave Frazier, man. And we're just, you know, just having a very um, interesting conversation tonight about songwriting, about how uh, the songs that he has written, how they have impacted, um, you know, our lives and our music ministries. We talk, we sung them all. Um, a L. He said, uh, uh, "There's a study that you can Google. Those who drink tea live longer." All right, God bless. Those who drink tea live longer. There's a study, brother. So uh, switch from that. Switch from that coffee. I know you nice with making your gourmet coffees. Come on over to the tea world, brother. You, I, I, it's amazing. I was listening to uh, um, Pastor Jamal Bryant one day talk about coffee. Um, a lot of people don't know, although coffee has healthy caffeine for some people, um, coffee is very corrosive to the stomach. And uh, uh, if you drink too much coffee, you could have a lot of stomach problems. So you just do some, all you got to do is Google it. You know, you can learn, you can learn so much. Is he prophetically speaking? <laughs> and and uh, you know that sugar thing, I I can't I can't emphasize this enough. You know, please don't put no sugar on your grits. Don't belong on the grits, but <laughs> but just just uh, <laughs> uh, bet if 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 all of us could just back away from sugar. And and like I said, I, I just think that would just impact your life. Go on a sugar fast. Take take two weeks and don't do, eat no sugar. You'd be surprised hey, how you feel. Hey Dave, quick testimony, bro. <laughs> I have not drinking any soda on a consistent basis since July, since July, since June 30th of last year. Like I can count on one hand how many times I've had soda since June 30th of last year, bro. Yeah, Water, I was. A I was a strong Mountain Dew drinker. Mountain Dew is my drink. I would take Mountain Dew and put it in the freezer and get a little ice in it, and <laughs> and that was my daily almost for a while. But uh, yeah, I, I don't own a soda, and I haven't owned a soda in years. 
years yeah. now. Yeah, yeah, man. So that that's amazing. And I well, know, I, I should say, I matter of fact, let me take that back. I do drink natural sodas, and they have a, a lot of great natural sodas that don't have sugar. So that's something you know. I just throw that out there for free. Okay, a lot, a lot <laughs> of great natural sodas out there taste good too. But go ahead. Good stuff. Good stuff, bro. Um, so uh, for those who are just coming on, I know earlier you mentioned a little bit about your songwriting process, and uh, you gave some encouragement uh, to creators. Um, just speaking a little more specifically for new writers, for new writers trying to get past writer's block or what should they write? You know, you mentioned you write David songs, basically, like songs that you feel that you can present well, that you're connected to. Um, what, are, what are some uh, tips for you know, newer songwriters, guys that are writing now? I, I think great songwriters are great listeners. And I think uh, if you want to write gospel music, I, I always say, go back to the essence of the music. Go back to the core of the music. I, I, I still consider myself a student of gospel music. So yeah. go, go back and pull out the old Andre Crouch records, pull out the Walter Hawkins records, pull out the Edwin Hawkins records, pull out the commission records, pull out uh, the old Winans records and just listen. Because because you you can learn you can learn so much about music and even the evolution of gospel music over the years. Go back and get the old Hezekiah Walker records, the whole ins old institutional records, um, the old. Uh, I mean, it's so it's so much old Donald Vale's, old New Jerusalem, uh, old um, Charles Hayes, yeah. old, old uh, Father Hayes, rather uh, old. Um, Clay Evans, old Timothy Wright, old, uh, let me take it to Jersey, old Gardner Prayer. Yes, sir. Uh, old um, Milton Bingham, old That's Donald right. Malloy. Man, Donald Malloy, shout out. Yeah, um, great record. Um, he, I, I was blessed to write a couple of songs on his uh, Hold On to the Promise record, which is a phenomenal, phenomenal yeah. record. Uh, uh, that band was uh, Carlton Pope on organ, James Perry on piano, Jeff Davis on drums, and Reggie yes. Young on bass. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. So, yes, God. Uh, anybody on this live, uh, go on. You can only pretty much catch it on YouTube, but the album is called Hold On to the Promise. I did two songs on there called one song called Storms Keep Coming that I wrote, and yeah. another two called Take Up Your Cross. Um, Check that out. So that, man. Was, that was that, that was my closest thing I did to Jesus keep me near the cross was take up your cross on Donald Malloy's record. But that's a phenomenal record. Uh, 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 there's a uh, Donnie Harper. Donnie Harper, yeah. Yeah, go back and get the old Donnie Harper records, the LA Mass Choir records. Listen, there's so much music out here to learn from. And then, of course, listen to the new guys that's out. You know, listen to how they're arranging, and 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 uh, so that's first. Become a student of the music. That's 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 always going to be good. And then also listen to great songwriters. I'm a big, um, I'm a big uh, uh, songwriter buff. I guess I guess um, I, I'm 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 a big fan of people like uh, James Taylor, uh, Carly Simon, Burt Bacharach, David Foster, yeah. uh, Diane Warren. Yeah. Uh, uh, um, there's a couple of, there's a couple more. Let me see. Um, uh, but definitely, uh, James Taylor, if he's taught me anything in his music over the years is the power of the story. He, he, yeah. he's able to write songs of just about anything and make them musical, make them melodic, you know? And, uh, I, I, re I really respect that, that, uh, being able to tell your story. Yeah. Making it, make it musical. Yeah. How often are you writing? Um, I, I, I do a lot of cataloging, which means sometimes um, I'm writing maybe in my car, popping it, you know, I may be just riding along and I say, oh, that's a nice little thing. And I'll pull up my, my phone, hit the voice memos and just kind of put a thought in and then I'll kind of expand upon it later on, maybe throughout yeah. the day or, or a different day. Um, but uh, I, I, I keep a lot of songs in, in catalog mode because I, I, I'm always receiving requests for songs and uh, it seems like I always have something going on. So 
Uh, I just finished uh, Darwin Hobbs, a new song for him, a uh, new song for Pastor Shirley Caesar. Um, of course, uh, I, I still believe is the single choir single that I have out now with the uh, BBC Worship, which is the choir from my church, BBC Worship, I still believe. Yeah. And, um, and then I just got a single that's dropping in about five four hours uh when yes sir three three hours three hours and three, three minutes hours and three minutes uh this uh never end uh uh i'm i'm gonna post on facebook and all my social medias and stuff album credits so people can see who played and who sang and all that kind of stuff but uh i i went back and just got some subject matter that i wanted to share and and uh yeah uh, got some great people, great musicians playing on it, and uh, um, great singers on it. And uh, I'm I'm doing a, some light leading. I'm semi-retired from leading songs, but I but I decided to come out of retirement for never end. I'm gonna come out for a couple more songs. I want to yeah. put out the, my fifth Psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs project, which is going to be called Grace Songs, and that should be ready by coming the beginning of the summer, end of the spring. And uh, the BBC Worship record, maybe I should talk about that, that, I still believe, I still believe came from the same record that the song Release came from. Mm. And nominated for a Grammy this year that Ricky Diller recut. So it's that same record, uh, Pastor Carlos Kelly presents BBC Worship 2018. Okay. And uh, I wrote most of that album, produced that album. So Ricky was the first person to take a song off of it. And and take it to number one or all the charts and 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 now nominated for a Grammy. So, yo man, congratulations! I appreciate congratulations that. to you on that, man. That's 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 love because it is you know twenty plus years later, bro. And man, you're still producing, producing, man. Well, I I, I hope I hope you know my like I said I, I you know I've had other interviews and people ask me about the Grammy thing like I said I didn't write I didn't set out to write a song that would be nominated for a Grammy I just really tried to do a good song that people could do in their churches uh on Sunday morning <laughs> and and something relatable uh Timothy Wright uh Elvin Timothy Wright told me years ago when I first started writing that Sunday morning is the only thing that happens to the believer every week and if you write mm. songs for Sunday morning, you'll never wear out. That's what he said to me. And I really tried to aim for Sunday morning and give people things that they could use and in, in, uh, in, a, in a culture that is trying to phase out what happens on Sunday morning. I'm trying to keep it happening. Facts. Yeah. It was crazy, man. Like, I know I know Timothy Wright was uh, I know he had a formula and I know um, he definitely might be considered one of the one of the greatest when you consider he just wrote a song that said Jesus and they were singing it all over the world. Yeah. I mean, I mean, Jesus. he played, he played that particular song, although it's Jesus, but he, you know, he's got some other stuff. It's savior, 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 savior. healer, 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 uh, 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 you know, people add things, you know, every great song can be interpreted by the hearer any way, you know, any way. And then that's that's the powerful thing. Um, uh, like I said, even I need to survive. We talked about that, man. There's so many versions of that. I mean, uh, I ran into Bishop Charles Blake, uh, presiding bishop of Kojic, in the airport one day, and just you know, I'm just I, first I was surprised to see him in the airport by himself. You know, he was like, I you know, I'm, I I've flown domestic. You know, for 30 years, I don't have a private plane, no security, and I. <laughs> and then I was like, well, you know, Bishop, uh, I, um, I don't know. Yeah, I, I've written a few songs. You know, I'm not sure if you know who I am, but you know. And he, he said, well, yeah, I listen to a lot of guys. He said, what did you write? I said, I wrote, I need to survive. He said, oh my God, <laughs> come, come have lunch with me. And we, and we went and had lunch, and he just began to tell me how I need you to survive was the fellowship song at the. Uh, at West Angeles, at yeah. that time. and uh, the version that they did was much faster. Had three part harmony. Had all these little musical colors and stuff like that. But you know, great songs are interpreted by people how how they feel it should be done. You know, that's what makes it great. You know, yeah. That ability. Nobody wants to do it their way. You know, then you haven't really written a great song. So that's good. 
that's 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 good. Um, this guy uh, Samuel to Samuel Tober makes a comment. It would be inspiring if songwriters could have a resource site to send their songs to to be critiqued by accomplished creators. What are your thoughts on that? I I, I think I think the resource for songwriters has to be uh, uh the has to be people. Um, I think. I, especially from a gospel perspective, um, I, I, I think if you if you are a songwriter, and I, I I I teach this, I tell people this all the time. I get emails all the time, people sending me songs and stuff, and I'll give them. You know, I first ask, do you want me to give my hard critique? You want me? <laughs> you sure you want me to give you a critique? But I, I'll give it to you. I try to help. But I learned how to get in and out of songs, how to get in and out of thoughts and ideas by, by just doing it. You know, I did it at, church, at my church. You know, um, I tell people to try. If, you, if you're not at a church, you know, find a community choir, join GMWA, join the Dorsey Convention, join a licensing organization, uh, get a SoundCloud page, uh, get a website, Post on your Facebook page, you know, sing your songs. We're in a time now that, you know, people will share <laughs> or not. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, yeah, I mean, uh, there's no excuse now for not, not getting out there and getting your feet wet. Now, will everybody like everything you do? No. Yeah. Will everybody respond favorably? No. But get in the trenches, get out there. Uh, uh, send your songs to people. You know, I, I, I accept, a, you know, I listen to a lot of music and I, and I give honest opinions and I try to point people in directions, but don't use the excuse that you don't, you, you, you wrote this song for Yolanda Adams and she's the only one that's going to sing it. Well, you might not be able to get to Yolanda. You might need to get to Tosh Cobb. You might need to get to uh, Jekyll and Carr. You might need to get to somebody else that has a platform and uh, you can reach out to those artists through their management in a lot of cases. You know, connect with the manager and say, hey, I got a SoundCloud page of original songs. You can call, go and listen to it. If you can't sing, hire a singer. To if you can't play, hire a keyboard player. You know, um, when I when I tell people now the way the industry has changed, it was a time you could put out a great song and maybe do a thousand dollars of marketing and you would be good. Yeah. Uh, you put another zero behind that now. From a marketing perspective, that's just you know. It's just marketing. Yeah, that's just marketing. So, so if I if it costs me three thousand dollars or four thousand dollars to do a song, I still got to add another ten to market it to get it going. So, yeah. it's it's a new world out here, and a lot of artists feel like if, even if you do write a great song, they want a part of it because they don't want to share their platforms with people anymore. They need to make some money off of that. It's a lot of little colors. And 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 uh, a lot of little uh, um, different things that are involved with songwriting, and I try to talk about them as much as I can. And uh, I actually have a songwriters. I did a songwriters uh, 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 a master class. Yeah, that I'm going to replay again that I had some of the greatest songwriters that I knew on it. Donna Lawrence is on there. Yeah, uh, Percy Beatty is on there. Yeah. Uh, Darius Brooks is on there. Yeah. Mike Brooks is on there. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, uh, James Hall is on there. Uh, Darius Polk, who wrote uh, 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 um, Nobody Greater, is on there. Um, Jonathan Nelson's on there. A lot, a lot of great writers. Just give it some input, and I'll be re-showing that again. But it, you know, there's no excuse for a creative right now not to have a platform. You can create your own platform. SoundCloud, YouTube your own Facebook page. I don't understand how songwriters are, are call themselves songwriters and they don't have a page where people can't listen to their music. They don't even have a music page. Music page or their page not public. It's yeah, like, yeah. I mean, I mean you, gotta, you, gotta, you gotta get all the way in. Go all the way in. You gotta go, pass waist deep. You gotta go neck deep. <laughs> you know, because um, of, While we're on that, Dave, real quick, just in your opinion, someone is, someone finally gets a placement and you mentioned this about People want to get paid to share their platform. Um, what is your professional opinion that you don't mind giving publicly about giving up percentages? 
um, when it's your, it's your first time out? Well, I, mean, I, I, I've told writers, um, I tell writers and I've always told writers that there, there, there is going to be, uh, there are going to be percentages. The higher up you go, the more percentages people want to take. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I, it's it's one of those kind of slippery <laughs> slopes because I don't want to, I don't, I used to tell writers, no, I don't, don't, don't do it. Um, uh, don't, don't give up any air publishing. But uh, if, if, if you're trying to establish yourself as a writer in this particular industry, in this particular climate, you're going to have to place something with someone where you're going to give up something. Um, because in the grand scheme of things, you know, 60% of something is better than 100% of nothing. So, so you do, you may have to give up something on one record, but not every record. And, uh, um, I'm at the point in my life right now, and I've been this way for a while where I, if I, if I'm doing a song with somebody, a major artist and they like it, you know, they, they I've, I've had people ask, so what percentage of your song are you going to give to the artist? Uh, none. And uh, um, there go that Dave Frazier grin. And uh, and I understand <laughs> if you have to pull it. I understand, you know, but I, the giving up percentages days is is long gone for me. No, I, feel I, you, I have bro. I have I have a track record. I have a resume. I've been doing this way way too long, and I'm really not impressed with the fact that you're gonna have my song played uh, all these and all these platforms and i'm gonna be top 10 radio and stuff i've been there done that i got the t-shirt so <laughs> not even that that that's serious it's, it's probably more serious for you than it is for me and i, yeah. I don't I, you know, I don't mean that in a in a in a bad yeah. way. my focus of writing music is to try to bless as many people as i possibly can but I can't let you rob me in the in the in the in the process. Yeah. <laughs> but now another new writer that's coming along, they would ask me the question. Well, Dave, I'm on the same record with you. Uh, uh, how much percentage did you give? Well, I didn't give up any, but you might have to give up 25 on this. But right. just limit the term. Limit the term that you give up the money for. Don't don't sell don't sell the song, but limit the term of how long you have to give somebody money on your on your intellectual property because that's that's the name of the game just being able to at the end of the day keep owning publishing and yep. because that's how you make a living that's how you're able to survive no man this is amazing so um i want to i want to get in on this um on this single man that's dropping um shortly man in a few hours bro um never end Never end. Today is February fifteenth. I wrote Never End maybe a month ago, and I went to church and said to uh, the music director at the church uh, where I'm director of worship and finance. I said, "I said, hey, his name is Raymond ja Raymond Darius Jackson, who is a phenomenal, phenomenal. He's actually co-producing the record with me, but he's phenomenal guy, yeah. singer, keyboard player." A ranger producer but anyway i said to ray i said hey i gotta i gotta record this song right now he said like right now like today i said no right now like this <laughs> we get a chance and I, I i i he said well let me work on a a basic track worked on a basic track got back to me i said well here adjust this here move that there move this here call some vocals let's, let's have a vocal session and then farming in the other instruments and farming in the strings and me coming and do the lead, the whole nine yards and taking some pictures and, and just doing the whole process, a 30 day process. Um, um, Never End is uh, basically what I'm saying in the song is my worship, my song of praise will never end. Mm. 
because because of what I say in the verse for for your life you gave for me for for your love that lasts eternally yeah for sufficient grace and mercy my song of praise will never end my worship to you will never end oh that's and, amazing and so the vamp of the song is is i won't get tired I won't give in. My song of praise to you will never end. I won't get tired. I won't give in. My song of worship to you will never end. So I just kind of, I, I, I'm. It, it, it has some flavorings of, of praise and worship. It has some flavorings of the Shekinah music from yeah, back yeah. in the days. It's not, it's not something that is difficult to sing. Um, I, I think. And 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 let me just say this too. It's been a long time since I wrote a song that actually was less than four minutes long. This song is three minutes and fifty six seconds, <laughs> or seven seconds. So radio is gonna love it because it's under four minutes. And I think production wise, I think people will hear some really really nice colorings. Um, and then my friend Roy Cotton put some strings on it from Dallas and. Uh, and uh, it's a nice mid tempo, feels good. And I, I, I've haven't had a single, really, a, a, a true single out since uh, God is doing something wonderful in me, which is going back uh, about maybe nine years or so. So, but I God feel, is doing something wonderful. Yeah. So, so yeah. I really feel good about Never End, um, and uh, I hope people feel the same. Like I said, Midnight. Uh, 1201, 1202, it should be Spotify friendly, it should be uh, Apple Music and, and YouTube music friendly title, yeah. any place that digital music is found. And, and, I, and I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to open up. I really want to get some feedback from people because um, music, music it, it brings you to a really a place of transparency. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you know, you, 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 do all of this stuff and you put something together and and nobody likes it. That's like, oh my God, you know. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> right, right, right. So so I'll be live a lot tomorrow in the day, just randomly, just kind of talking to people that get the song. Hopefully, um, my friends overseas will gravitate to it as well, too. Because I really wanted to do something again. Simple, simplistic, singable, spiritual. Uh, uh, those, those are, those are like my little, little pointers and my little tips for songs. You, you want your song to be singable. You want your song to be simplistic. You want your song to be spiritual. Yeah, and you yeah. also want your song to create synergy, connection with people. And cause, right. cause, cause when people can connect on the thought, you know, that's, that's powerful in and of itself. Yo, Scott Rosen. <laughs> Scott, Scott was playing the drums on Four We Know, that Caribbean joint, back in Winston-Salem. I remember yeah. that. Scott Scott is family, his brother, uh, overseer, James Rawson, family. Uh, uh, listen, Bible Way uh, was a great place to grow up in the, in the 70s and 80s. Um, I, I still remember the days... I. I remember the day that I discovered how to get to Patterson, New Jersey from Brooklyn. Uh, um, you know, so many, you know, you had to take the train to 42nd Street and jump on a train and take this bus from the train. I, I mean, I was like so happy to do that, man, back in the day. You know? um, Facts, yeah, man, with uh, like Tony Moses. And yeah, Tony and uh, Terrence Kitchens. Uh, and Terrence Kitchens, man. That, what a great, what a great guy, great musician. Um um, just, uh, uh, I, I remember those days. I mean, I, I, re I remember, uh, uh, the first time I took the bus, I took the Peter Pan bus to <laughs> DC to go to headquarters church right there uh, on, uh, New Jersey Avenue. Right, um, right. I, I remember, I remember, man, I, you know, I remember the all night, the, the, the national choir rehearsals. I mean, yes, how sir. we would such incredible church it was like so it was so and they were killers you know from all over the country from columbus ohio from indianapolis indiana from 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 the north carolinas and from columbia and nice. and, and all the the east coast thing uh dc baltimore first app 
going right on down the turnpike, uh, uh, um, all in Jersey, all in yep. New York, then going up into Mount Vernon, the Browns and the, Browns. the Lions and the Pettifords and the all, I mean, not the Pettifords, but the, uh, um, Pettifor was you, where you were. Where we were, yeah. But, uh, um, uh, it's about Peace uh, Hill? Yeah, Peak Skill, the Petersons and and Peter, Philly. Oh, Petersons, yeah, yeah Philly, you know, yeah. You know, all of those people that we that we were like family. We got together. Um, we had great musicians, Benji Love. Uh, man, I mean, uh, beloved. I mean, I mean, just great, great, great people. Um, and it was a it was a time of learning, and it was a time of, you know, I, I still. Have a have a reverence for Michael Rogers, just like you know, from his from a songwriter perspective, bro. It it ain't get much better than that, bro. It, it he 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 set out at an early age to master that that feat of bringing thoughts and ideas and making them musical, making them churchy. So I mean, there's so many songs that Jason, listen, man. There's so many songs that you have never heard. <laughs> if, if 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 Pastor Rawson was on this, if if Overseer Rawson was on here, listen, we we often sit back and talk about the unrecorded Michael Rogers songs. Listen, are just listen. As, as are just as serious as the recorded Michael Rogers song. Listen, um, Bishop, I Bishop a lot. Walker can, can confess to that as well too. We were big, big. Listen, man, it it it. it it stopped. It began to stop <laughs> with, with Bishop Apostle Michael Joseph Rogers Sr. Listen, I think right between, now today, I think between Jimmy and Jeff Davis, I have gotten more Michael Rogers stories. Um, because again, like for me, he's the icon. He's the national youth president, minister of music. When I'm coming up, late night musical. But but he never. I, I think I think some people knew, you know, that when Ricky Diller did "Stay with God," that was kind of like a, hey, you know, here's Michael Rogers, you know, that kind of deal. But, bro, it that would be a whole nother show uh, to talk about the impact that he had on on me as a young man, a young a young musician, and then the young songwriter. Um, it was amazing the things that he was able to do. Um, I, I would watch him just, you know, from an organ player standpoint, just carry a church, carry a service, you know, without other instruments, direct a choir, then write write something killer, you know, just, you know, just write, like, you know, oh, I was thinking about this the other day. And I just wanted to teach this, you know, like he was that guy, you know. Um, I, I actually think I'm going to teach "Magnify the Lord" like next week at church or something. Like that. Yes. You know, I mean, it's he got he got real he got real certifiable Sunday morning, you know, stuff. Forget about like the Bible Way Radio Choir stuff. That stuff is like, man, that stuff is gold, man. Just, just uh, I I sometimes get into my mood and I just go and I just listen. To, I go on YouTube and just listen to the albums and just kind of get into a zone, you know. Um, he was, he was powerful. He was, he was powerful because he was a listener. And, and, uh, if anybody gets anything from me off of this live, master the art of listening. Wow. Uh, wow. Uh, great listeners, man. Uh, 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 Alan Cruz, who was the, uh, a piano player at Bob Way with Michael Rogers in the formative years of the music. Great listeners. They listened to everything and they were able to learn from what they listened, whether they used it or not. They learned. I never forget, like I was, I would come to Bishop Mike. Well, I know I came in one day. I'll say, Hey, have you ever heard any any DJ Rogers music? And he was like, Oh, yeah, yeah, I listened to that. I just wrote a song or something that he did. I used a chord change from that. I was like, Come on, man. You know, you know, it did like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it was nothing that was out that he didn't listen to that he had like just in passing. It didn't it didn't change what he did. But uh, you know, I can't forget you. you know, that, was straight, that, that was straight doobie brothers. That was that was uh, you know, uh I'm, that was I'm here to love you, the doobie brothers. So yeah. he listened to the music, but he still, you know, he was, it was always learning for him. And I would listen to the arguments between him and Alan Cruz. Like uh, Alan Cruz was a, uh, 
a Andre, whereas Michael Rogers was a Hawkins. And man, Ooh. they were back and forth, man. Yo, you know, Andre versus Walter, Andre versus Edwin. And it forced me as a young man to really get into listening to the music. Like that a lot of people have never really listened to the Edwin Hawkins singers albums, mm -hmm. which are phenomenal. There's one called The Comforter. There's another one called uh, Wonderful. Uh, uh, Wonderful had a song on there. Come on, children, let's sing. Come on, children, let's shout, let's shout. Come on, in, let's sing the goodness of the Lord. That was yeah. the and, I, and those albums maybe had like six or seven songs. Imagine Heaven. And these are all Edwin Hawkins records. Walter's records were, were a little more known because he was a pastor and there were Love Center Choir records. So that's where you hear the Love Alive records and yeah. he did a couple of solo records in, in, sprinkled in there. Um, but Edwin did Edwin Hawk. He had the Edwin Hawkins singers, which were, which Walter was a part of. And Edwin was really the 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 like if I went through the Edwin Hawkins songs, you know, like I'm going away, come by here, come by here, be grateful. Yeah, that's Edwin, that's Edwin. You know, uh, uh, going to a place that's Ed that's Edwin. Um, um, you know, he was a phenomenal, and I think what he his storytelling kind of broke off into what Walter started to do with the choir pieces and stuff. So yeah, I mean, become a great listener. That become is the, a great listener. Yeah, my son, uh, um, David Fraser Jr., uh, is. Uh, um, he has his master's degree in jazz and orchestral drums. Sometimes I post some of the things he does on the drums on Instagram and stuff like that. He's a phenomenal drummer. But one of the things that we do when we get together and we go get something to eat and stuff is we sit down and we talk about music that we listen to, that we used to listen to. Because listening shows you how you fit in the music. And I don't know if everybody understands, you know, mm. even stuff from a songwriting perspective, you got to see where it fits. How does this thought fit? How does what the core, the the background vocals do fit? How does the lead fit? You know, and you got to listen to a lot of music to see what fits. And and really successful music, popular music, because popular music kind of shows you, gives you the gauge of what fit for people. Right. And, and some of the greats, you know. So so, yeah. I mean, got to be a great listener. If you're gonna be successful in music, got to be a great listener. If you want to be wow. a successful you got to be a great listener. If you want to be a successful songwriter, you got to be a great. If you want to be a successful lead singer, you got to listen to other great leads so you can learn wow. how to tell stories and say more than just scream and holler and do runs up and down the scale. That's nice, but if there's no substance to it, if there's no word to it, if there's no no meat to it, it's just music. It's just notes. That see, that's yeah, the big yeah. thing now. Everybody got run challenges and stuff. But nobody got great song challenges because <laughs> no it's, no, it's no great song challenges because it takes a lot more to do a great song than to do a run. Listen, I, I, and I think, um, you know, what you just lended there, that whole becoming a great listener is definitely crosses industry, um, business, religious, government. If we're going to be effective, we have to be great listeners. Um, and, I, and I think what we we fail sometimes with hurting people, people that are hurting, people that are going through different situations, is that we've chosen not to listen to them. And so our music and our ministry is limited. But if once we start listening, we can really make an impact and we can really, you know, empower some people. But we got to listen. We got to we got to first learn what the problems are. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's good stuff, man. Dave, man, I appreciate your time tonight, and um, we're gonna listen tomorrow. The rest of this week, bro, we're gonna we're gonna push this song. The rest of this well, week, we're gonna push this song. We're gonna help promote. Well, how um, about this, Jason? Please listen listen to the song first, because <laughs> you may not like it. <laughs> you may like me, but you may not like the song. So, so tonight, if you're still awake tonight, listen to it. Okay, because 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 I'm telling you, I can't say this enough. I I I'm okay. I'm I write songs and stuff like that, but anything that I do is only as effective 
as the listener, what the listener gets from it, from the audience, what they get from it. I'm not writing songs for David Frazier. I'm writing songs for you. So, so your, your, your thought, how you feel, how your wife feels when she listens to it, you know, just, just whatever, you know, if, if it is something that, that you want to go back to, is it, it, is it too short? Is it too long? You know, I'm going to go live with it. I'm going to go ah. live with it. I'm going to go live with it and give my on, on site in the listen, moment. Listen, that's what music was about. Do, do you do you ever remember the excitement it was for you to go to Tower Records right. or go to a record store and buy a CD? Like how excited you was to rip the plastic off and get it into a player and turn it up real loud so you could. I want that kind of energy in our music again, and uh, I, I really wanted to create something that was special. And uh, I feel like it's, I feel like it's something special, but I, I'm partial because it's me. So, <laughs> but well, uh, well, but uh, I'm hoping that it blesses a lot of people. That's what I'm hoping for. Well, Dave, I mean, again, your your content is always thorough. Um, I think you know, even going back to some earlier stuff. Think about this, Dave. You're talking to me now, and in 1994, we were singing "Before We Know." At that time, I'm roughly 17. My brother is 13. And when he comes on and sees you, he goes, for we know convocation. I think that speaks. <laughs> I think that speaks to your songwriting and you know, just your impact on what you do. I don't like because even for me, I, I do listen to a lot of independent artists. I listen to a lot of independent artists, probably more than I listen to mainstream artists, but I do still support. Uh, the mainstream. I still do. I support both, but um, there are a lot of like a lot of people that I just really enjoy, um, and for whatever reason, I mean, a lot of your stuff mainstream are from the um, artists that have sung your songs. But dude, songs, hymns, and spiritual songs, those are great projects. Substance. And, and believe know? it or not, believe it or not, those records. Um, uh, the first, the first Psalms hymns record. I, I just, I think I designed my own album cover or something for the first one. <laughs> That's that pink, that pink with the little keys on. I think I made that on my computer or something like that. But uh, man, I, I had so many people just reach out to me about that, about that very first uh, Psalms hymns. It was really special. Um, the second record, I, I think a lot of people just didn't know that we were still. <laughs> Uh, uh, we were still actually making them, but uh, that was. Uh... Oh, and I since you mentioned it, you can go on Apple Music right now, it, it, or, or YouTube Music, or Spotify. It's called the Collection, which will give you Volume One and Volume Two of right. the songs, hymns, and spiritual songs music that we did. You hear his presence here to heal, the wonder of God, uh, uh, the offering songs on there, uh, his presence here. To, you know, just a lot of. Um, Stuff that was birthed in that small little church there on the corner of Herkimer and uh, and uh, Lord, I can't think of what's the other street, Kingston. Yeah, that was Kingston and and, and Herkimer right down the corner. So right. yeah, let's, let's do that. Let's let's take the next couple. Listen, guys. And somebody just put overcoming power. That was Scott. That's that was Scott, Scott Rosen. Overcoming power. That that was a. I, I mean, still people ask me about that. that I did that with this. Uh, first with the New York Apostolic Fellowship Choir, mm. something that I wanted to do. Um, I think that was my very first live session. Uh, Jeff Davis played drums on it. Uh, Joe Wilson played bass on that record. Mm. And, I, and I played a CP80. Wow, I never forget. Wow. And uh, uh, we had people from apostolic churches from around the city. I had people from Refuse Temple, from... from uh, Highway churches from Bible Way churches, and I think I had about maybe that 25 singers. And uh, we did Overcoming Power, and uh, then Bruce Parham did a version of Overcoming Power on his first one of his first records. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, that that music was was a lot of fun, it was fun to do, you know, it was, I, it, I felt like I was, I was, I really just f felt like I had messages that people could use. And I still feel like that today. I, I, like I said, m the music that I do, that I've written has always been for 
from a focus perspective, how can other people use this? Yeah. And and I and I think other artists just focus on expressing their individuality. And I think that's great too, if you can, but you got to give people stuff that they can use. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. And and I, and I, and I, if I've had any success in, in doing this, I really tried to do music that people could use that people would go back to and revisit at some point. Yeah. That's good stuff. So Dave, I'm telling you now, I'm going live tomorrow. I'm going to download the song and I'm going to do it in the moment on the spot never end I'm gonna listen to it I'm gonna share it facebook better not block me <laughs> <laughs> you can put 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 we don't own the rights to this music just put that disclaimer on the bottom of on lower thirds you should be good all right <laughs> <laughs> yeah we gonna we gonna go ahead and uh put that up there man but i'm i'm definitely excited and i'm happy for you know just all that you have done and contributed to my life musically and the various conversations when we ran into each other and uh, stayed connected over the years. So much success and blessings to you. Um, any last words? Um, I, I just want to just say to everybody uh, that's listening, I, I just want, um, I have a, a little saying um, that I like to share with people. I try to bless as many people as I possibly can while I can. And uh, uh, if you're listening to me, just try to bless as many people as you possibly can with whatever you, how whatever a blessing looks like, whether it's um, buying somebody some tea at Starbucks or a sandwich at, at, a, uh, at a local uh, restaurant or feeding the homeless or getting somebody a coat or pouring into somebody, supporting somebody, creating an opportunity for somebody. Bless as many people as you possibly can why you can good stuff brother i just want to pray real quick and then um we're gonna sign off so heavenly father thank you for everything that has been said tonight father i pray that you continue to bless the hands of my brother david bless bless his mind bless what you give him to uh give to the world um we ask that you would touch his family um continue to keep them keep them healthy keep them safe cause them to prosper um, in this season, God. And we thank you for all things. And Father, let, let his music ministry, let his life continue to be a blessing to this world. And for that, we will give you all glory, all honor and praise in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And again, Pastor Jay, thank you for having me. I appreciate no doubt, it. Brother. Much, much no love doubt. to the family and to uh, Bible Way Nation. Big up, Bible Way Nation for, for yes, checking sir. out. And uh, <laughs> I love y'all. Check out Never End. It drops in about two and a half hours. Two Check and a half hours. Let me know what you think. Send me an inbox. Post something. Share it. Uh, uh, I want to. I want to. I want to be top ten stream song. I didn't release. I just put this out here. We're gonna go. But most people release music on Fridays. The industry releases on the second Friday and the fourth Friday of every month. This record is being released tomorrow, which is the 16th. The Grammys is next month, March 16th, was moved because of COVID. So I really feel like it's the timing of God. So, um, and my radio promoter guy said, uh, it's good that you release in tomorrow. So you don't, nobody will get confused about anybody else. Being <laughs> <laughs> All the other releases are Friday. So uh, I want to blow up the internet. I want to blow up Apple music. I want to make it into the top five, top 10 downloaded, top 10 stream. And uh, it, we, we have playlists on Apple music, on Spotify of David Fraser songs. So, you know, it'll be in that. Listen, pop the playlist in your cars and stuff like that. And, and uh, I hope, I hope everybody's blessed. And again, thanks pastor for having me tonight. I appreciate it. No problem, bro. Appreciate you, man. And we'll talk soon. Yes, sir.